I want to welcome you to the Python Basics Your First Program video course. My name is Christopher Bailey, and I'll be leading you through this course. The first Python Basics video course was about getting Python installed on your computer. And now that you got it installed, it's time to start coding. In this course, you'll write your first Python script. You'll learn what happens when you run scripts with an error, and you'll learn how to declare variables and inspect their value. You'll also learn a lot about how to write comments. Along the way, you're going to also learn the differences between what is called the interactive and the script windows inside of idle. You'll learn about the read evaluate print loop. And not only will you be creating scripts, but you'll also learn how to run them. You'll learn about a very important operator called the assignment operator. What are the rules for creating variable names and what is considered valid or invalid? Along with that, you also learn a few of the standards that are outlined inside of PEP 8. I'll take you quickly through the table of contents here before we get started. This video is the overview. Then you're going to dive right into writing your first Python script. After that, you're going to learn how to make some mistakes, but also how to get around them. Then you'll dive into creating variables. After that, it's all about comments and leaving helpful notes for yourself inside of your code. And then I'll wrap up with you with a summary and include a bunch of additional resources. So it's time for you to get started with writing your first Python script. Okay, it's time to get started writing your Python script. You're going to be using a program that comes with your installation of Python. It's called IDLE, which stands for Integrated Development and Learning Environment. It has two main windows, and you'll spend some time in both of them. The first is called the Interactive window, and I'll show you that in just a second. Then the Editor window, which is where you'll actually write scripts and programs that you'll save and run later. All right, let's take a look at the Interactive window. If you don't already have IDLE open, then go ahead and open it. You can find it in the folder that the application was installed in. So in my case, I have several versions of Python here, and I'm going to choose Python 3.10 and double click on the IDLE app. IDLE's interactive window contains a Python shell. You can see this name up here, IDLE shell. It's a textual user interface used to interact with the Python language. You can type a bit of Python code into the interactive window and press enter to immediately see the results, hence the name interactive. When the window opens up, it'll display this same text at the beginning. The text shows the version of Python that IDLE is running and some of the commands you can use to get help or view information about Python. This spot over here, this is called the prompt, and it's where you're going to be able to type code. So right in front of this cursor prompt, go ahead and type in one plus one, and then hit enter. And you can see that it output two. Python evaluates this expression of one plus one and displays two. And then it displays yet another prompt just below that. Every time that you run code in the interactive window, a new prompt is going to appear directly below the result. When using the interactive window, it works as a loop and includes these three different steps. Python reads the code that you've entered at the prompt. That's again, the thing with the three different little greater than symbols. And then it evaluates the code. Python will print the result and wait for more input. This is referred to as a read evaluate print loop. We usually abbreviate it as REPL, R-E-P-L. Python programmers typically refer to this Python shell as the Python REPL, or just REPL for short. Okay, let's try something a little more interesting than just adding numbers. A write of passage for every programmer is writing the program that prints the phrase, hello world, on the screen. At the prompt, go ahead and type in print, and then you can create a set of parentheses here. So I'm opening the parentheses. And you can see it's giving me a little bit of additional instruction here, which is kind of nice. And we'll learn all about this stuff as we go throughout the courses. In this case, we're going to print some text. So we want hello, comma, world. And if I hit return, you can see that it outputs hello, world. This bit of code that you typed in here, print, is a function. 
A function is code that performs some task and can be invoked by its name. The above code invokes or calls the print function with the text hello world inside of it and outputs it. The parentheses tell Python to call the print function. If I just type print by itself, it won't know that I want to call it. It'll just tell me about it. It tells me that it's a built-in function named print. In order to call that function, I need to put the parentheses and then tell it something, a value, as it see it's prompting me here, to put in there. And last time we typed the same thing, so I'll do it again. Great. Those parentheses also enclose everything that gets sent to the function, it goes into it as an input. And the quotation marks indicate that hello world is really text and not something else that we might want to print. Inside of idle, you can kind of see some interesting highlighting going on with the different colors. With the current setup that I have, you can see that a function is different than the output. And you can see that something that's inside of quotation marks looks different than, say, these numbers up here. By default, functions are highlighted in purple and text is highlighted in green. This interactive window is really useful for trying out small code examples and exploring the Python language, but it has a big limitation. You have to enter the code one line at a time. So alternatively, you can save Python code in the text file and execute all that code in order to run an entire program. That's where we're going to switch into using the editor window. You'll write your own Python files using idle's editor window. You can open the editor window by selecting File and New File from the menu at the top of the interactive window. Let me show you that. The interactive window is going to stay open when you open the editor window. It displays the output generated by code in the editor window. So you'll want to arrange the two windows so that you can see them both at the same time. Inside the editor window, type in the same code you use to print Hello World in the interactive window. Note that idle highlights code typed into the editor window, just like it did in the interactive window. You don't have to add the prompt as it was in the interactive window. It's not required. Before you can run the program, you need to save it. So select File and Save from the menu and save the file as hello underscore world dot pi. On some systems, it'll use a default directory of where Python's installed, the same place that idle is. Make sure that you don't save your files in that directory. Instead, save them to your desktop or to a folder in your user's home directory. The .py extension indicates the file contains Python code. In fact, saving your file with any other extension is going to remove the code highlighting. Idle only will highlight Python code when it's stored in a .py file. To run the program, you can select Run from the pull-down menu and run module. You also might notice some key commands being highlighted here. In this case, it's the function key F5. So the program is going to output to the interactive window. You'll see restart and then the directory and the name of the file that's being run and its output. Idle restarts the Python interpreter each time, which is the computer program that actually executes your code when you run a file. This makes sure that programs are executed the same way each time. If you wanted to open a file, you can go to File and Open. And in my case, I'm reopening the file that we just saved under my home directory, Python Basics, your first program, and hello world.py. You can also open a file from the file manager, such as Windows Explorer or the Mac OS Finder by right-clicking on them and say open with. All right, you've made your first program. Next up, it's time to make some mistakes. Okay, it's time to make some mistakes. It's really difficult to not make any mistakes while programming. And in case you haven't made any so far, I'm gonna go ahead and have you practice making a few of them just to get an idea of what's happening. The first type that you'll experience is called a syntax error. And the syntax error occurs when you write code that isn't allowed in the Python language. The language doesn't understand what you're trying to do. I'm going to have you go ahead and create an error in the code that you've already written. To practice creating that syntax error, 
I want you to reopen your hello world.py file. And at the end of it, go ahead and remove the second quotation mark. So it starts with a quotation mark and then hello world, but there isn't one that closes the quotation there. If you save that and then run, again, you can press F5, you'll get something new here where it says unterminated string literal detected at line one. Depending on the version of Python you have, this message may change. Python 3.10 has added much more explicit explanations of errors, which is really kind of nice. And you'll see more of them throughout the course as we continue. But what you might see in an earlier version of this is a statement that says EOL. And EOL stands for end of line. In this case, it's been reformatted and says something a little nicer. So what is a string literal? Well, a string literal is what you've created here. But in this case, you haven't closed it or terminated it with the additional quotation mark. To create a string literal, you have to enclose the text that you want in both of the quotation marks. It can be either the double quotation or a single quotation. And you'll spend a lot more time on this in an upcoming course all about strings. To fix this syntax error, you would need to add that other piece and save. And then it can run and print out. So that's considered a syntax error. And you might have noticed that when I did that and saved and then ran it again, that if I click on this, right where I clicked on string literal here, it actually highlighted where it began, which is kind of an interesting feature too. So it's kind of letting you know that, hey, this is where you started this thing, but you didn't terminate it, didn't complete it. Okay, now there's a different type of error. The other type of error that you'll experience in programming is called a runtime error. Idle catches syntax errors before the program even starts running. But in contrast, runtime errors only occur while a program is running. When an error occurs, Python stops executing the program, and then it's going to display several lines of text that is known as a traceback. And it's going to show a bunch of useful information about the error. What's very interesting about it, it's best to read them from the bottom up. I'm going to have you go back into your file, and this time you're going to create a runtime error, and you can see the difference between the two. To create a runtime error, try this instead. Remove both quotation marks. So what's going to happen here is this is valid code. It understands its syntax, but something different is going to happen. So go ahead and save that. And when you run it, you'll see this happen. So this is called a runtime error. And again, to read the traceback, this thing happening here, it's best to read it from the bottom up. So it says right away, this is a name error. There is a name for something you're calling for to be printed. It's called hello, and it's not defined. It doesn't know, you know what hello is or what it's referencing. It's valid as far as the syntax of it, the way it's written out, but hello doesn't exist, so it's, it's not been defined yet. And that's something you're going to do in the next lesson, is learn how to define variables. And if it were to continue, it actually would have the same problem with world. Again, you can read from the bottom up, so it's a name error. Name hello is not defined, and then it shows you that statement where that happens, and then it actually kind of goes a little further up here. This is the file that it's reading from. Sometimes Python projects have multiple files and the traceback might lead into another file. So in this case, it says, okay, where you have this saved and the name of the file. And then it actually tells you which line it is. Again, you're not going to have such simple programs coming up. This one is just a single line one. So it's pretty straightforward where the issue is. But that's how traceback works. And you get to practice them much more as you continue along. So do you get the difference between a runtime error and a syntax error? In the case of a syntax error, it won't let you even run it because it doesn't look like normal Python code. It is not following the correct syntax. 
In this case, this is a completely different error where it read through everything, but when it went to run it, it couldn't find hello being defined anywhere. Okay, it's time to do a little practice on your own. As a bit of review, try writing a program that idle won't run because it has a syntax error. Then write a different program that crashes only when it's running because it has a runtime error. Okay, next up, you're going to learn all about creating variables.